Hello beautiful souls and welcome to my channel Rosology. So this is another new moon video and this new moon we are going to be talking about is in the sign of Sagittarius and this is one of the last and final new moons in 2019. We have one more coming up on uh, December 26th, 2019, the new moon in Capricorn. Um, So yeah, this is kind of like gearing up to the end of the year of this 2019, the culmination of 2019 basically. And I'm excited because of the energy that is being produced astrologically like looking at the charts I'm so excited because I see what's been happening the last few months well honestly all of 2019 has basically been setting us up for 2020 which is going to be a major 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 year that I will be talking about soon but just not in today's video and I know that the new moon was yesterday and I wanted to come out with this video yesterday but I really wanted to kind of take in this gorgeous, fresh new energy. And you can work with the new moon three days before and after. So um, it's not like you're really on a time crunch here. You have plenty of time to work with this new moon energy. But I just wanted to also remind anyone out there that is looking for a fresh new start, that even though the new year isn't here just yet, it does not have to be January 1st for a new year, new me. You've probably heard that saying before, new year, new me. But you don't have to wait for January 1st for that. Every day is another chance to be reborn and to choose something else we are only required to be aware of the fact that we have that choice to make to either change our reality by accepting the responsibility of taking control over our life or to allow our life to unfold however it will that choice is your god-given free will and we are all responsible for the karma we choose to create we do not get to deny karma she comes whether we are ready for accountability and responsibility or not so instead of new year new me let it be new day new me new hour new me new moment new me create your new life right now and that's exactly the energy that I'm seeing in the charts that I'm going to be exploring a lot more in depth in this video so I'm not sure how long this video will be hopefully not too long because I really want to get this out for you guys today and depending on what you're here to see go on ahead and head down to the description or the comments for the timestamps to different points and topics that I discuss in the video for those of you that want to take in all of this information go on ahead get some pen and paper some food drinks or wine and we're just going to go on ahead and get started because basically what I'm seeing astrologically is like our purpose is coming into the fray our per we're really starting to embrace our soul's purpose which is huge so let's go on ahead and jump in and see exactly how our purpose will be presenting itself to us for this new moon in Sagittarius and for the end of 2019. All right, so getting into the astrological chart, the energy that the cosmos is producing, during a new moon, the moon sits particularly close to the sun, and this is called conjunction in astrology. Conjunction is when a, a like two planets fall within about eight degrees of each other. So the sun and moon are pointing in the same direction or towards the same constellation of Sagittarius. And this is how a planet falls into a certain constellation. It's pointing towards it. Now it's interesting because Sagittarius is the only zodiac constellation that sits facing the direction of the center of our galaxy. And this could not be more in line with what is going on in the astrological charts. And I will get to what that means a bit later on in this video. Um, but I always see a new moon as the moon offering itself, its knowledge, its wisdom and power or giving its light away, sacrificing itself almost as an offering to the sun because we can't see the moon during a new moon. It's completely invisible. And with this new moon in Sagittarius, I see the new moon becoming one with the sun or our emotions becoming one with our ego or our subconscious pouring itself into our conscious. So the deepest parts of ourself comes to life by coming into alignment with the most surface level aspect of ourself, which is the conscious. This is almost in a way creating like a doorway or a portal for us to easily see into our subconscious, the hidden parts of us that are usually tucked so far away from our awareness that we are oblivious to it. But during a new moon, especially this new moon in particular, we are getting a chance to go as deep into our psyche as we want. And this is setting us up for a fresh new year 2020 energy, okay? In 2020, when you think about 2020, you know, you can kind of think about like a 2020 vision, seeing things clearly, you know, so I'll be getting into that 2020 stuff in a different video, but it's, it's amazing what's going on here. So Sagittarius, moving on to Sagittarius, what is the mutable fire sign Sagittarius? This zodiac sign is normally depicted with a being holding a cocked arrow, the archer that's always ready to shoot. This is to show potential because when that arrow is released, it travels as far as it can before it succumbs to gravity. 
And this is to show what can be, what can happen or what can be achieved. We can go or follow wherever that arrow landed. Again, the distance this arrow traveled is showing what is possible or attainable. So this makes Sagittarius a wanderer that wants to always follow the trajectory of that arrow. It wants to embrace its own potential. It wants to push itself to that same distance or standard or possibility. This is what makes Sagittarius so fiery and full of passion for life. So Sagittarius can become easily restless without exploration. I mean, just look at the sign that Sagittarius follows. It comes directly after Scorpio. And if you guys um, watched my new moon and Scorpio video, I'll link it down below if you're interested. But if you guys watched that new moon and Scorpio video, I talked in great detail about Scorpionic energy. But basically, Scorpio is a sign that makes us aware of the great depths that lie in our soul and consciousness. And Sagittarius provides us the courage and desire to go explore those great depths. Since Scorpio made us aware that there's even an ocean to explore in the first place, basically. So to have the moon and sun in the sign of Sagittarius, this can manifest in several ways. A lot of people sort of chalk Sagittarius up to being a traveler or higher education, higher learning, like college, religion, faith, or some sort of explorer, somebody that's really seeking the truth. But I see Sagittarius as a resonance. Sagittarius wants to understand. It wants to make sense of something. It wants to resonate. Sagittarius is addicted to that rush of energy that it feels when mind, body, soul alignment happens because something has stimulated or triggered its spirit with truth. It wants to connect to its discoveries and it does this by dissecting what it finds. It breaks down the awareness that Scorpio brought into our life so we can resonate with those findings. So if we were left off with Scorpio, <laughs> we would be mindful that we feel these really deep, heavily embedded emotions, but we might not understand why Sagittarius connects us to the why, okay? So Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, and this planet in a general sense is you know, people say it's all about growth, expansion, good luck. Jupiter is actually like a magnifying glass is how I see it. In my opinion, it doesn't necessarily always mean good fortune or good luck because, you know, you you also um, we have to kind of choose how Jupiter plays out in our life. But this planet is, bas is basically going to expand anything it touches, like running a magnifying glass over an object. It's just going to blow it up tremendously. So depending on how Jupiter is aspected in your chart, it might not bring a lot of good fortune and good luck you know it could kind of magnify maybe um other things in your life the planets usually act like their physical nature basically so jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system and that's exactly his personality he is masculine energy he is big larger than life he gets your attention so anytime jupiter sits close to another planet like in conjunction with it it expands it it can provide that planet with a boost of really jubilant good energy because jupiter's nature is to be jubilant and expansive but like I said that depends on a lot of other factors for instance my natal Jupiter conjuncts my moon and people born with their moon sitting very close to Jupiter are usually very optimistic or can manifest easily or create their own luck easily but depending on other placements this could also mean that your emotions could easily drown you or overwhelm you as well and is the one thing that may keep you from manifesting so it can go either which way there's a light and shadow side to everything not to say that shadow is bad or evil right but uh you know Jupiter is is in its ruling sign of Sagittarius for this new moon. And it is in conjunction with Venus, the planet of values, beauty, love, attraction, money, the things it is that makes life worth living. And Venus is sitting in the practical cardinal earth sign of Capricorn. Now, Capricorn is the sign that is a legend in the making because Capricorn only goes after its biggest, wildest dreams. Capricorn is committed to leaving a legacy by fulfilling its destiny. So Venus is, is almost like consulting Capricorn right now in a way, asking what is it that my soul truly values, needs, or wants? What does my soul want more than anything? How does my soul leave a lasting legacy by fulfilling its destiny? So this new moon is highly focused on our values, what we truly want, what our soul truly wants. This new moon is all about feeding your soul what it wants, not just what it needs. The soul doesn't differentiate between wanting and needing something because it's all the same to our spirit. Our spirit desires or wants what it needs. Our soul only desires to fulfill its assignment, its own prophetic destiny. So our soul just wants to do what it was sent here to do. And that's what this new moon is focusing on. And with the sun and moon being 
being in conjunction, this is a time where we are more tapped into our needs and wants. We are more tapped into seeking out or exploring this divine journey because the sun and moon have become one. So the sun is the ego, the way we identify. This is the part of us that desires or wants for whatever reason, because our ego is something that we have constructed over time, over time, over life, over experiences. The ego sort of kind of forms, it gets it gets constructed. And that's what makes the ego very subjective. That's what makes the ego very changeable, honestly, in a way, um, is the fact that it's kind of fragile because we made it. The ego can be changed. And that's why we are able to go through an ego death. But the moon is our instinct. It is our subconscious, the more emotional, spiritual side of us. That is just our essence. It's just the the true version of us. This is who we truly are. The moon is the more emotional, spiritual side of us that craves what it needs to feel fulfilled, to feel safe, secure, and stable. So this is definitely a time to manifest for sure, but it's going to be most helpful to pinpoint the things you not only want, but need. Not just the things that your ego desires, but the soul can also feed off of. If you can find this thing that bridges your wants and your needs, you'll attract it into your life very easily. In short, you are going to connect with your own divine destiny. And this is the time for that. But another thing to note astrologically about this um, new moon in Sagittarius that's happening is Mercury and Mars are still in the sign of Scorpio. And this is amazing because that means that Mercury, which rules the mind and Mars, which rules our energy or motivation or drive, the reason why we do the things that we do are are in the sign of Scorpio, who's all about becoming aware of the deepest depths of our being. So while our mind and our drive is scouring the ocean floor on a subconscious level, because Scorpio is a water sign and Scorpio is a deep diver. So as our mind and reasoning is scouring the depths of our subconscious and kicking up the dust of that information it finds or becomes aware of, it kicks all that information right up to the surface where our subconscious mind is. And at the time of this new moon with the sun being in Sagittarius, this will give us the focus, dedication, drive, and courage to say, oh, that's what I really want and need. Well, let me go after it then. Not just what I want and need, but this is what my soul wants and needs. This is why my soul was put here. This is what my soul has been yearning for. Remember, Sagittarius just wants to resonate. It wants to resonate with life, with purpose, with meaning, with its own existence. So the inner planets, Mars, Mercury, Sun, Moon, Venus, or the personal planets that rule our day to day, they're all in agreement with each other to stay focused on what we want and need on a deeper level. The way that we'll know what direction to go in and the next steps to take is solely reliant on Sagittarius. Remember, this is a sign of resonance. I'm going to keep saying that and I'm going to probably sound like a broken record, but <laughs> you know, this is the sign of just, just feeling, just connecting, resonating to something. So when you discover that thing you want or need, when you discover your purpose, your spirit will respond to it in such a way to alert you in a sense or to give you that kind of permission like, yes, this is the right direction. This is meant for us. Let's go. It's it's almost like a notification bell with your soul is going to get set off. And honestly, that's all a want or a need is. It's funny how something as simple as wanting and needing can lead us to the biggest discoveries of our own existence, which is why we are out here. <laughs> but needs and wants is something that resonates, speaks to, or makes sense to our being, our life, our existence. It's, some, it's something that we can connect to because we want it or need it. And Sagittarius is looking for that connection and these other planets are helping us to establish without a flicker of doubt what those beings, what those things are that we need and want because this is all about feeding the soul, but in a way where the soul is almost binging or gorging what it needs because Venus is sitting next to Jupiter. And Jupiter expands everything, like I was saying. So it's asking us, what legacy is your soul looking to fulfill? Like not just an extra hundred bucks this month or a promotion or a partner or whatever. Like let's go so big that our dreams become scary to us. That's Jupiter. And Sagittarius is like this stunt double, this alter ego of us that all of us would love to be because Sagittarius is so fearless enough to, to go right after it, to go right towards that arrow that it shot. So instead of asking for a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, your soul is asking 
looking for a partner, a lover, a twin flame, a soul partner. Because our wants and needs are being inflamed almost by Jupiter, Jupiter is kicking it up a notch and throwing some seasoning on our desires. Instead of asking for that promotion, maybe your soul has come to fulfill a legacy of being the CEO. Maybe you want to run your own work or manage it. Maybe that's what your soul is yearning for. Instead of that extra hundred bucks just for this month, maybe your soul is craving to fulfill a destiny of wealth where money isn't even an object. This is what Jupiter is doing to our values. It's expanding them or pumping them up to meet their own potential. Remember Sagittarius, the archer is all about potential resonance. What can this want or need become? What is the potential of this need or want? What can this become? That partner has the potential to be a twin flame instead of just a spouse. That promotion has the potential to put you in charge. So what potential does your wants and needs and dreams have? How high, how far can it go? Because Jupiter says that there is no sky to limit us. There is no glass ceiling. We are going above and beyond what we think is possible. Another thing to note astrologically here is Uranus, who is sitting in the sign of Taurus, will be opposing Mars, okay? So opposition means it's 180 degrees apart. It's kind of opposing each other they're, they're opposites basically Uranus will be opposing Mars and Uranus is in the sign of Taurus and Mars is the planet that gives us purpose so this is Uranus coming in trying to compute probability because Uranus is a very technological practical planet a lot of people don't really talk about that too much but it is a very technological practical planet that says but how can we logically do this how are we going to logically do this like yeah I know you feel like you have a reason or a purpose or a destiny to go explore but is it safe and normally Uranus doesn't care about being safe and taking risks, but it's a lot more cautious while it's occupying the sign of Taurus. Taurus moves slow to make sure it is standing on stable ground. It doesn't like to take risks. And Uranus being in the sign of Taurus is very influential because Taurus is ruled by Venus. And Venus is sitting super close to Jupiter, who is the ruling planet of Sagittarius, where this new moon will be. You see how kind of all those moving parts work together? That's going a little deeper deeper into astrology where you want to look at placements and aspects from a deeper level to see how these energies influence each other to see well what is this what is the ruling planet of this of this sign and where is that planet at and where is this house at and you know that's getting a little bit deeper but basically they, they are all really kind of coming together right now it's like all the stars are aligning it's amazing um, but I am seeing Uranus come in and try to ask us to be reasonable but we are supported and propped up by so many other energies that is saying go big dream big or ask for more aim higher so again we have this sort of push pull between Taurus and Scorpio that we dealt with all Scorpio season last month but use your intuition to direct you in what areas needs practicality and which ones don't some areas need practicality and logic other areas need faith and some areas need the both of them so this Uranus opposition can also be a good thing to me I'm seeing it as a good thing um, because Sagittarius is saying let's dream wild crazy and big and Uranus and Taurus is saying that's perfectly fine I you know Uranus is a rebel it, he's an individual he loves to do his own thing and to fulfill his own individual destiny while being a part of the collective so Uranus is, is all for it but Uranus is asking the question how do we make this tangible how do we bring this into being because Taurus loves <laughs> to feel good being ruled by Venus Taurus is ruled by Venus as well so it craves fulfillment so Uranus will have no problem following this destiny it's just going to want to make a clear plan about how to get there so this is a magical almost unreal time to ask for what you truly want and if what you are asking for scares you you're more than likely on the right track because fulfilling the soul's prophecy the soul's desires is fucking terrifying it puts us in alignment with space time and all that exists so we connect to something ancient divine arcane mysterious we become aware of that wheel of fortune energy or of our own existence and that's a lot for the eyes to be able to finally see itself that can be that can be very very overwhelming but we are being encouraged to go beyond expectations reason what makes sense and what is practical this is like I said earlier setting us up for 2020 where we'll be seeing things more clearly but Sagittarius is setting us up to have a year in 2020 that we otherwise told ourselves wasn't possible and that's what I love about this energy since a kid I used to always challenge what 
what people told me was possible, especially growing up with like the the mom that I grew up with. Like my parents were always very supportive of my of, of my brother's and mine's dreams. Um, but my mom, she was somebody that really pushed us to think way outside of the box. And I love her and appreciate her so very much for that. I always wanted to challenge what people told me was possible versus impossible. And so I, I normally always felt like reaching after the biggest, brightest star because I know that that's a potential that I can reach if I put my all into it. And this is the energy we'll be on collectively, which is amazing. This is providing us the power, strength, intelligence, logic, courage, and vision to do what cannot be done. This is a time for you to take everything that another person or the world or society or your peers told you you couldn't do and make it happen. Even the things that you told yourself you couldn't do. This is all about you proving yourself wrong and saying, guess what? I am going to do it. Even if you have to have one of those crazy conversations with yourself <laughs> where you're like, oh, Oh, okay, insecurities, you want to doubt me? Well, guess what? I'm, I'm going to make this happen. Sometimes we have to almost fight our own mind, our own thoughts, our own beliefs and doubts because they're very limiting. We have to push past that. So the soul is craving to push itself past its own capabilities, past its own doubts created by the ego, past the restraints that society has tried to oppress us with. It's scary and exciting. It's the ultimate thrill because we are going after our very own potential, which is beautiful. The world is always trying trying to tell us what we can and cannot do, what heights we can or cannot reach. But when you are spiritually tuned in or just simply in alignment with yourself, you realize that you don't answer to this plane of existence. This dimension, this earth is where we happen to incarnate, but we are not confined to this place. And that's what makes us multidimensional is the fact that it's like, yeah, you know, I'm here, but don't get it twisted. I'm not from here. That's what Jupiter reconnects us to in a way, our very own physical and spiritual potential. This is this is also unlocking that deep understanding because Jupiter is pointing in the direction of the center of our galaxy, the place, the area where our galaxy was first born. So do you see how everything is connecting us back to this essence, to the start, to our origin? When we connect back to our beginning, we connect to our own divinity. OK, and I know this all probably sounds really great, but some of you might be asking, OK, so how can I practically use this energy <laughs> to connect with my purpose, my legacy and why I'm here? Well, it's very, very simple, actually. If you are feeling lost, look inside, literally just consult yourself. What do you want? And if you cannot pinpoint what you want, there is a part of you that you are denying. Do not deny yourself of what you truly want and need. Do not be afraid of that. We've been so conditioned to be afraid of our own essence, to be afraid of our own nature, to be afraid of our own spirit, our own soul, to not consult ourselves, to call our intuition crazy, to say that we're just imagining things. We've been so conditioned and programmed to live for others by their rules, to live for society, to live for our government, to live for our job. We've been so conditioned that many of us are so far removed and disconnected from what we truly want. For most of my life, and I can speak for myself anyways, I was completely living for everyone else and didn't even realize it. My awareness was so non-existent. I thought that I knew what I wanted until my world came crashing down and I went through a three-year period of the dark night of the soul. But when that happened, I realized that these things that I thought I wanted were never what I actually truly wanted. And it took my world, my ego dying for me to be given another opportunity to completely rewrite my story, my life. And when I accepted that responsibility of making my life minds, I slowly started to build something I could recognize in the mirror. And that saved not just my life, but my spirit because I felt so displaced from myself. And it was like, now I can finally see me. Now I can finally notice my own reflection. Now I can finally get to know who I truly am. The death of the spirit is extremely painful. It's the most painful thing a living being can experience because it's the death of our own life force energy. And when we neglect the soul or do not feed it, we risk depleting it of its true needs. When you start to do what you want to do, not to hurt anyone else, but to fulfill yourself on a deeper level, you tap into that life force energy and it's completely undeniable. This is why so many people have walked away from the things they never thought they'd say goodbye to or the people they thought they'd never say goodbye to. 
to or were afraid to part from because their soul led them. And when they tapped into feeding their soul, they could not deny the peace that came with it. It's such a peace and a feeling that cannot be described, but cannot be forgotten either. It's something that once you feel it, even if it's just for a moment, you find yourself always chasing after it. Like, what was that feeling? What did my being just experience? What was that connection? What was that feeling? For me, it was feeling more like myself, feeling more empowered, feeling strong, feeling like I had connected with parts of myself that I had forgotten, feeling like I remembered parts of myself that I had forgotten from a previous time or a previous life. And it was what I've been searching for my entire life. This entire incarnation, I was searching for that feeling, but nothing on this earth could bring me that or could satisfy me in that way until I started to feed my soul by following my heart. Your heart is the compass. It is the GPS that is given to us by God, by this higher power. We are always being directed and led, but we are the ones that choose whether to listen or not. And sometimes we are too afraid to break out of the norm, to break out of our programming, to follow our heart's truest desires. So it's not that you don't know what you want or who you are. Those answers are given to us before we even ever come here before we even ever incarnate into the next existence. It's that you're not allowing yourself to go deep enough to tap into what you truly want. Is fear in the way? Because fear is a very heavy blockage. Is it doubt? That's another heavy blockage. Is it rejection that you're worried about? Being ostracized by your community, family, or society? What is holding you back from feeling and then pursuing what it is that you truly want? Ask yourself if there's anything holding you back and be honest about it. Be brutally, brutally honest about it. Be brutally honest with yourself. The other reason besides all of this is divine timing. These answers for what our spirit is supposed to be doing, our soul is the keeper of. And our soul has this clock that is connected to the divine. And every time we come across answers, clarity, direction, it is because our soul got the notification bell, like I was talking about earlier. Our soul received that notification bell saying, okay, now it's time to release this information to your consciousness. And we just randomly become aware of answers and clarity from time to time. And it's usually so random. And that's what epiphanies are. When people say, oh my God, I just realized something. Oh my goodness, how did this just fall into my lap? Oh my goodness, how did I just receive this download of information? This is the time for resonating. And if you've been working in tandem with your soul, with yourself, if you've been healing, seeking yourself out, answering your call, these answers will Will come. Do not stress it. There is no rush to this. No timetable. Yes, I know this is a video about the new moon, but this does not mean that you have to figure it out by November 26, 2019, or by the time 2020 comes around. Your soul is infinite. It's set out on this existence, on this incarnation, understanding that. So your soul is not worried about a date and a time. Not like that. The spirit realm does not experience time in the way that we do. And with this new moon in Sagittarius coming up, these energies, these cosmic energies, if you know how to tap into energy, if you know how to make yourself sensitive enough to tap into these really subtle but powerful energies, you will be led by a higher power. You will be led by these, these beings in the higher dimensions that will lead you right to those answers. It will lead you to the places, the people, the things that are holding more clarity for you, that are holding wisdom and knowledge for you. And when that wisdom and knowledge, when you come across that wisdom and knowledge, it is going to trip something off within your own intuition that reveals those answers to you. Our intuition gets tripped off by almost like a memory of something by by something that it resonates with when when that spirit gets that ding of like oh my goodness this is resonating that is when answers and clarity are released okay so these things will come to you but definitely work with this new moon and Sagittarius energy if you're really feeling like I'm struggling with these answers set your manifestations set your intentions for answers just write down you know I want answers I, I need clarity I want guidance I want to find my purpose let that be the thing that you're trying to manifest before 2020 hits if you want to put a timetable on it and say I want to I want to hit this I want to understand this I want this clarity before 2020 write it down and watch it come to you I promise you that it will come to you in some way shape or form and especially if you are sensitive enough to realize that these answers are coming to you you will sense them okay to get to the herbs crystals and oils part of this video I do want to say before I talk about these things specifically I want to say to follow your intuition your intuition will always lead you to the things it is that you need to use that your own specific being needs to use because we all carry our own vibrational 
thumbprint basically so that means that there are certain things that are going to resonate with you there's certain vibrations that you're going to vibe with and other ones that you're not all right and so the different herbs that you guys can work with with this new moon in Sagittarius would be clove anise sage basil burdock rosemary nutmeg mugwort and interesting little thing about mugwort I just happened to come across mugwort uh, last week and was like yep I need it for it's for whatever reason um, and I'm learning to really trust my intuition when it comes to these new and full moon rituals because I notice my body um, just sort of being drawn to what it needs to work with for these new and full moons. And it's always on point somehow. Mugwort is associated with Sagittarius and I never knew it before. And I'm not really sure if I should talk about this just yet, um, but I just had last week the most intense out of body or astral projection experience. And I astral project in my sleep I've been doing that since I was a kid but it always comes across as like a dream like a really vivid lucid dream but this out-of-body experience last week happened while I was meditating and it was the most intensive thing I've ever felt my entire life because my consciousness was still very sharp um so it was really crazy so I'll be using mugwort to work with my dreams to get some more clarity on what I experienced mugwort is really useful in protecting you as well as kind of connecting you to those other dimensions uh causing astral projection lucid dreaming things like that is very 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 powerful so okay so use caution when working with mugwort so moving on to crystals that i'll be working with again follow your own intuition um but the first one i'm going to talk about here is smoky quartz and smoky quartz is absolutely beautiful um this is this stone is amazing for grounding and rooting but it also raises your vibrations at the same time so it's like a stress eraser it's it's really really an amazing stone to use especially if you are really kind of searching for answers and clarity and things like that and you just want something that you know you just kind of need to feel grounded you kind of need to feel rooted because Sagittarius will also cause you to explore religion explore spirituality I know for me since ever since we got into this uh, Sagittarius season I have been reading books that I had and hadn't gotten a chance to read I've been really researching my roots African spirituality every time Sagittarius season comes around or Jupiter goes retrograde or something like that or Jupiter does something crazy I, I already know like okay yeah I'm gonna be finding something else out about spirituality that really resonates and connects to my spirit my being my soul something that really speaks to me so this is really amazing when you are doing uh, work like that when you're looking into different spiritual beliefs religions spiritual practices whatever it is that you want to resonate with uh, this will keep you grounded so that the way that when you find that thing it's like okay yeah this this feels good to me this makes sense this makes sense to me so moving on to black obsidian now black obsidian helps you to face your true self and desires it's also a very creative stone and it helps in manifesting spirit energies or metaphysical energies into the physical plane so it's very powerful um stone for that it also really helps to deal with like to kind of wipe out um bad energies as well too all right and moving on to sodalite so sodalite merges logic and intuition and it helps to make contact with the higher mind so this is a stone that seeks the truth and is perfect for Sagittarius because it's exactly what we're looking for we're looking for the truth we're looking for what resonates with us right and the truth always resonates with us Amethyst, one of the key players when it comes to crystals and <laughs> I think just about everybody that's in a crystals owns a Amethyst stone um, but it's such a beautiful stone right and basically Amethyst is a very protective stone and has a high high spiritual vibration so this is an amazing stone for connecting to the crown chakra and working with divine intelligence every time I meditate and I put some um, amethyst near my crown chakra um, it's just it's like I always go way deeper into my meditations and usually end up seeing something another stone here is labradorite absolutely just I, this stone is just a beauty it's just beautiful like I can't like, I mean what else can you say about it it's so beautiful um, but Labradorite is amazing because it connects you to cosmic universal energies it is highly protective as well because it repels unwanted energies and it also helps to kind of reform your aura so if you have any sort of leakages in your aura Labradorite will literally repair it for you it's an amazing healing very protective highly protective stone moving on to another beauty and that would be Lapis Lazuli which is an amazing stone for for the third eye and, and I honestly ad attribute uh, lapis lazuli the stone here I believe that this is why the ancient commissions otherwise known as ancient Egyptians had so many visions because they worshipped lapis lazuli they used to crush this and use it for for blues and use it to paint things and use it to color things um, and so I, I believe that's why they used to have all those visions of like 
half man, half animal, something like that. But it also helps with the throat chakra. It helps to bring peace. It connects you to your spirit guardians as well. This stone even takes unwanted or evil energy and it returns it to sender. And so yeah, very, very protective, powerful, beautiful stone. Another stone that is really good to work with for this Sagittarius new moon will be Lepidolite, which is really good for um, combating EMF waves, or, which are really harmful to our being. And EMF waves are electromagnetic frequencies. And it also, this stone also clears blockages from your energy centers or your otherwise known as chakras. This stone even helps to get into the Akashic records. Your soul's existence is in these records and everything it's ever done. So yeah, this stone is really, really powerful. Another stone that I'm going to be talking about is Citrine, which is really good for abundance fire energy. I associate the stone with Sekhmet because I actually programmed a piece of uh, citrine that I own um, with Sekhmet's energy to destroy obstacles. So every time I interact with citrine, I just feel her energy. It doesn't matter which citrine stone I interact with. I just feel like it feels like Sekhmet to me. But, but citrine is also known to carry the power of the sun. And I have manifested the craziest things I've, I thought impossible using citrine. So I've seen its power firsthand. It is an extremely powerful stone. So this will put you in alignment with your own potential and it never needs cleansing, which is really, really nice. So especially if you are like a Leo sun, moon rising, um, citrine is going to really mesh very, very, very well with you. But even if you're not a Leo and you don't have any fifth house energy or anything like that, um, you know, it, it's still this stone is still going to work amazingly with you. The next stone that I have here is a blue lace agate. And so this is a very healing stone. It's it's calming. This energy calms the mind. And when you look at it, it's like there's just something that's so calming about it. And so I don't know, every time I look at it, it's just like it just relaxes me. <laughs> so I know that it's a very, very powerful stone when it comes to just calming the mind. When you look at it, it's just peaceful. It feels peaceful. The color of it is just so tranquil to me. This helps with the throat chakra and expressing your truth, verbally expressing your truth. It also helps connect you to higher dimensions and energies in the higher realm. So very beautiful, powerful, calming, peaceful stone. I love blue lace agate. It's so pretty. I need more of this actually. But any sort of agate will work. This is a dendritic agate. I think I'm saying that right. I never know. Some, some of these stones are really hard to pronounce, but... Um, any really, honestly, any sort of agate will work. The next stone I'm going to talk about, I have a tiny little piece of it here. <laughs> really, really tiny. Hopefully my camera's picking that up. Um, but this stone is called malachite. And so this is a stone that is very slept on. It's a very extremely powerful, powerful stone. And when I first started researching it, I couldn't believe the information that I found on malachite. I couldn't believe that it was that that this stone was that powerful. I can't get into all of that today because this video will be like a week long, but this stone hasn't even reached its peak potential and evolution yet. It just has this like raw and tamed power. And so it amplifies whatever energy is around it, whether it's positive or negative. So you definitely want to program Malachite. If you're going to work with it, you definitely want to program this stone to make sure that it is only amplifying the energies that you want it to. This can be used for divining, for scrying, for clearing blockages, getting spiritual guidance. Once you program it, it's highly protective and it, honestly it just it does it all and last but definitely not least is of course what I talk about every single new moon and full moon video is just a clear quartz it's so important to be able to it's so important to have some clear quartz around this is just such an amazing stone it enhances whatever stone it is around and it, it, it's clearing it's a clearing stone as you can see it's like it's a very clear stone and that is exactly what it does to your being it clears you clears out blockages it clears out your energy centers plus the thing is is that clear quartz is like a chameleon and you can program it to match any stone um, in the world so that's just amazing I, I absolutely love clear quartz so these stones you can use around the time of the new moon that's when you'll probably really feel their energy and their life force because crystals are alive and they're living but you'll feel them more easily because they are associated with the constellation Sagittarius so it's like they get this sort of cosmic boost of energy and power a few ideas of how to work with these stones and herbs so you can place these stones or herbs under your pillow or bed as you sleep to help you do dream work or to reprogram your subconscious mind which I recommend 
recommend for everyone to regularly work at is reprogramming the subconscious mind because we are constantly feeding the subconscious psyche all day, every day with the different things we hear, see, experience, and conjure up within our own minds. So you can meditate with these herbs and stones. As you are doing your new moon ritual, you can just have these, especially the stones and the crystals, you can have them in a grid, which is like a shape or a pattern to place your crystals in. So they build up this concentration of energy and you can direct it to work with the ritual or you can direct this energy to your very own being for healing or tuning. You can program your crystals at this time as well with your intentions by binding them. And I just recently started working on that video for you guys about how to bind your intentions and magic and energy to crystals and any sort of object. So that'll be out soon for you guys. I haven't forgotten about that. You can even bury your crystals in the herbs that you use for this new moon to make them even stronger. It's the way you're bringing like the herbs and the crystals together. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use these crystals. Be intuitively led. Um, but those are some ideas for you guys. As well as with the herbs as well, you can burn the herbs in like a cauldron or something like that. Something like little cast iron cauldron or little cast iron bowl. Just make sure you're not burning anything down. And uh, burning herbs, they're very potent. They're very strong, especially if you're going to burn something like mugwort. It might put you in a completely different dimension. You can also use your herbs and oils to dress your candles. You just kind of will wipe it on your candle. You will just sort of dress your candle with it. You can sprinkle some herbs on top of your candle, surround a candle with some stones, write something out. And you can either burn it, burn it because Sagittarius is a fire sign. You can burn your intentions. You can bury them. You can keep them, put them in water, whatever it is that you feel is best for you to do. Okay. So now that we're done with this portion of the video, we're going to go on ahead and get to the last part, which is the tarot part of the video. So let's go ahead and get to the meditation. So you guys know how it is. I do things by now on my channel, but if you are new, then I always like to stress the fact that this is a general reading for the collective so in order for this general reading to speak to you specifically you need to be intuitively synced into the energy of this reading to help you all do that i will be offering a 30 second meditation so if you'd like to participate in this meditation go ahead and get relaxed by becoming aware of your being start by noticing your feet and work that awareness up in sections from your feet to your head after you've done that take a deep breath in through your nose for around five seconds hold that breath for three seconds then exhale for six to seven Seven seconds and I'll give you guys that 30 seconds to meditate starting right now. So hopefully that meditation helped you guys to kind of get in tune with your own intuition. So um, starting off with this reading, we're going to be working with the tarot cards first and then we'll get to the oracle cards. And as far as the tarot cards go, all I asked my guides was what it is that we need to know for this new moon and Sagittarius energy. So I'm just going to be kind of flipping them over. Let's go ahead and take a look. And the very first card that we have here is the seeker of swords otherwise known as the page of swords and the next one that we have is the ten of wands in reverse hopefully you guys can see that so right away starting off with these two cards i already have a message and i just have to get it out because it's like i don't even need to see these three cards yet these two right here right away this is the release of confusion of complacement and the coming in of answers and clarity the page of swords right here is a student kind of like almost like Hermione <laughs> from Harry Potter if you ever saw that movie growing up this page the page of swords is a question asking truth saying know-it-all that loves to be mentally stimulated that loves to learn and seek after knowledge and the ten of wands in reverse is all about releasing the weight of a burden so right away I'm seeing a step away from the burden of not knowing of feeling lost of feeling without direction and purpose even if we don't have the answers yet I'm seeing a peace of mind come in that's saying I might 
might not know where to go or what to do next, but I know I'm being led all the same. And who's to say that being lost isn't a part of your journey? To find your path usually requires being lost for some time. How can you know you're on the right path unless you have lost your way before? So I'm seeing this as a very good thing right here. I'm seeing this as, you know what, there may be a little bit of confusion here, but at the same time, this is a good thing because that confusion, when we are, when we are uncomfortable, that is what pushes us for clarity, for answers, for change. That is what pushes us out of our own comfort zone where we feel a little bit stagnant or maybe lost or confused or something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the next card here. And we have, hopefully you guys can see this. But we have here the Ace of Swords. Look at that. We have the Ace of Swords, you guys. It, exactly. There's answers coming. <laughs> I mean, wow. For sure, there's answers coming. Before even moving on to the next card, like, like the, there's, there's answers coming, you guys. Answers, clarity, purpose, truth, understanding. This is resonance that's coming. That's what this Ace of Swords is saying. This is a truth that will speak so deeply to your spirit that you know this is divine guidance or divine intervention. And that's what it's going to seem like. Like I was saying um, earlier in this video, these answers appear when our soul's notification bell goes off, which is tripped off by the universe to tell the soul, hey, now, now it is a time. Now it is a time to reveal this guidance. Now it is a time to reveal these answers. Now it is a time to reveal this next step. Now it is a time to reveal the truth. So it'll tell the soul to go on ahead and release those answers, release that guidance. Our only job, our only job is to be in alignment with our soul. So when these answers do unlock themselves, we are here to notice them and to take note of them. Okay, let's go on ahead and move on to the next card here. Hopefully you guys can see this. Look at that. Look at this. The Seeker of Wands. All right. I can't. I can't. Like you guys, do you guys see how many pages or seekers <laughs> that this deck calls it are turning up in this reading? We have another seeker or page here and it is the page of wands searching for meaning for purpose for passion for something that will resonate with its spirit because that's what the page of wands is searching for the seeker of swords the page of swords deals with the mind with thought and communication that is why the page of swords is more logical and is searching for answers through gaining knowledge the wands however the page of wands is much like the planet Mars. It's all about purpose, passion, motivation. What drives me to wake up in the morning and do what it is that I have to do? A living being needs purpose. Otherwise, we basically self-destruct because if we feel like a hamster in a wheel, like we're exerting all of this energy for nothing, we'll, ev we'll eventually stop trying or we'll just simply give up. And so the Page of Wands is here looking for resonance, for purpose. This is exactly the energy that I was seeing in the astrological charts for this last month of 2019. So the Seeker of Wands is coming to provide a reason or a purpose to the answers that we are seeking. Page of Wands here is very needed because if we just solely depend on the Seeker of Swords, that's dangerous. If we only depend on the Seeker of Swords and not the Seeker of Wands, that can be a very dangerous thing. It's dangerous to just believe or retain everything you hear or learn or see from another source with, without first consulting or without afterwards consulting yourself and your own intuition. When you read a book, when you learn something, Thing. When you guys are watching me, when you guys are watching someone else, when you're listening to someone else, you definitely want to make sure that you're consulting your own information, your own intuition as well, that you're consulting your own essence, your own energy, because your energy will not lie to you. Your energy will tell you what the truth is, what is true for your being. Yeah, the information may add up and make sense, but it, but does it resonate with your being? Does it speak to some deeper element of you that is your essence, your spirit? That's how the Page of Wands confirms that what you are discovering through the Page of Swords is not just knowledge and information, but wisdom that your soul can be fed from and apply to its own existence and can run off of. It's, it's almost like fuel for your soul. The Page of Wands is, is seeking fuel for your soul. So it is going to take this information and turn it into fuel for your soul, okay? And the very last card here. Hopefully you can see that is the Ace of Cups. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You guys, I don't know what else to say. And it's 11, 11 on the clock right now. Okay, so, so do you guys see this? We have two Aces, two Seekers, and the Ten of Wands in reverse. I can't, I cannot. There is so much that is literally just falling out of the sky and into our laps this Sagittarius season. This is so beautiful. Okay, so every ace in tarot is depicted as this hand that's just coming out of the sky to deliver you something. And that's to show you that 
what's coming to you came to you by means of divine interception. This is something given to you by the most high, by some sort of ethereal being. This is that divine being presenting you with a gift. The Ace of Cups is spirit giving us the gift of emotional fulfillment. In other words, emotional resonance, where something not only speaks to our mind and our spirit, but our heart as well. This is total and complete heart, mind, soul alignment. That feeling you get when every part of you is in agreement, like the Eight of Wands card in Tarot. This is very much like Eight of Wands energy, where every part of you is saying, this is the direction, or there's something about this, or there's something about that that speaks to me, and I cannot live without pursuing this thing. This is when we feel something that tells us what to do and we can't make sense of it. Everyone thinks that you're crazy until you pull it off. Then they want to know how you did it. So this is us fulfilling our destiny, for fulfilling our legacy, the prophecy of our soul's incarnation, fulfilling the reason that we are here. This is more than powerful, you guys. This is like prophetic. It's us becoming who we were created, not born but we're created to be by the most high, by the creator. This is us. This is our spirit accepting that. So of course, if you've recently started to say, you know what? I want more or I deserve more or I feel like there's more out there for me. It's because you were being seduced by your soul's promise that it made to the universe, which was to fulfill its specific sacred assignment you are awakening to what it is that you truly deserve and what it is that you truly want everyone is stepping to some leo energy right now that's what i'm feeling this is like very leo energy where it's very regal where it's like no this isn't good enough i deserve what's been promised to me and nothing short of that and this is what potential is it's what been promised it's what has been promised to us what it is that we can achieve reach for it and do not stop because the universe is pushing us towards that right now it is pushing us towards our own potential you literally can not fail okay i'm going to say that again for some of you guys you literally can not fail at your purpose it's impossible you won't fail so if that is something that you're worried about don't worry about it that is a waste of energy you're wasting energy by by worrying about something that can't even happen it can't happen Okay, so this is amazing. These cards, right? I, I feel like I don't even need to look at the Oracle cards. This gave me enough life right here, these tarot cards. But let's go on ahead anyways and check out the Oracle cards. And the very first card that we have here is, what do you need to release? The waning moon. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Luck is on your side, new moon and Sagittarius, you guys. I don't pick these cards. They just jump out as I'm shuffling. I... I wouldn't even waste your time or my time picking some damn cards that's that's crazy to me like no this is all intuition this is all spirit guides your spirit guides my spirit guides collective energy this is crazy this this is coming through to confirm everything it is that we're feeling right now um the next card that we have here is don't let pride get in your way full moon and leo i was just talking about i felt some leo energy here that's funny <laughs> then we have Look at that. Fifth house creativity. Fifth house is ruled by Leo and the sun. Amazing. Void, of course, moon missing. Very interesting. Mars force. I was man. I'm, I'm just done. I'm so done. <laughs> we were definitely talking, having a nice little conversation about Mars. Then the divine masculine grounding. Let go. OK, so starting off here with what do you need to release waning moon? Yeah, we have the ten of wands in reverse here, you guys. So there is something that definitely does need to be released. There may be some things that you're still healing or working your way through. We did just exit out of Scorpio season. That was extremely intense. Um, but this could also be talking about releasing your idea of what you thought your potential was and stepping into your soul's potential. Moving on to don't let pride get in the way, full moon and Leo. I'm actually seeing this as it's really an, an important time right now to be prideful, which I know sounds like the opposite of this card. <laughs> but obviously, I'm not talking about the shot, the shadow side of pride, because there's a light and a shadow side to everything. Pride can be a very good thing because it protects us from settling and it protects our value. So we can make sure that we are getting what we truly deserve and that nothing and no one is trying to say otherwise is trying to say that we deserve 
any less than that because we know we deserve the best. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past, the mistakes that you made. I said in the beginning of this video, I don't care if you came from making a major mistake five minutes ago to watching this video now. That five minutes ago was in your past. There's a new moment now. So that means new moment, new you. Okay, as long as you are breathing, it is never too late. So pride can be a really good thing as long as it's not the shadow side of it, right? Moving on to let go. Yes, again, releasing something. Something needs to be released. Obviously, the Ten of Wands are reversed. And then we have what do you need to release? So this is three different card decks talking about the same thing, releasing something and moving on to grounding. So ground yourself in your own essence. That's what I'm getting from this card. Ground yourself in your own essence, in your own potential and do not settle. When we settle, we fall from our rooted or grounded place. When you are grounded, you cannot fall because there's stable ground underneath you. It's impossible. Settling is literally removing yourself from that stable ground to go beneath your own value, to go beneath your own starting point. Ground yourself and do not settle. Do not remove yourself from that ground, from that throne that is on the ground. Only remove yourself to elevate, to reach for your potential, okay? And then moving on to divine masculine. Yes, we are in a time of masculine energy where now we are being asked to go like Sagittarius. He shoots his arrow to see how far he can go and then he moves. That's where we are at right now in a place of clarity, truth and structure to see where it is that we need to go. The divine masculine is very proactive. The divine masculine is going to say, hey, here's a structure. Here's what it is that we need. Now let's go on ahead and make that happen. Now let's go on ahead and work and work towards that. So this is a very good time for masculine energy right now. Masculine energy is very, very needed right now for us to go after that thing that the that we have kind of halfway attracted into our life. So the universe does half the work, we do the other half basically. And so when we're trying to attract law of attraction manifestation, the universe will kind of bring it to us halfway. Then we have to rely on that divine masculine energy to meet that halfway point, to bring in, to claim what it is that the universe delivered halfway to us basically so that's where the divine masculine comes in at so mars force moving on to mars yeah mars kept coming up for some reason in this video he just felt like he was sort of forcing his way into this conversation <laughs> much like how his energy is mars is the god of war but he's all about like i said dedication drive focus purpose he is the knight of wands all day he is the divine masculine as well and he is the force that gives us the momentum we need the fearlessness we need to unapologetically pursue what resonates with our soul's potential. So basically what's going on right now, which is kind of like what I just talked about, how when we attract, when we manifest from the universe, the universe delivers it halfway. And it is our it is our job to know, okay, now is the time to apply the divine masculine, to go get, receive to go claim what is ours, to bring it back into this reality, into this existence. So we call out for what it is that we want. The universe sets up the potential and then we impregnate that potential with our actions, with our choices, with the things it is that we do. And then that is how we birth this new reality, okay? So moving on to fifth house creativity right here. For some reason, this feels like, and I did mention Leo a few times when talking about the tarot cards down here, but I mentioned how this felt like Leo regal energy where we are not settling anymore. I love Leo energy because it keeps us in alignment with what we deserve and with our potential. But I'm seeing this card as for some of you, your wants and needs, your soul's potential or purpose is going to really feel far fetched like Sagittarius. For some of you, um, will feel like that arrow went so damn far that I'm not sure if I want to make that journey. And that's okay. You have to do what resonates with you. And if you're not ready to make that move, it doesn't mean you'll never be ready. I can't tell you guys how many times I, I said, I literally said to God, no, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to pursue my purpose. I don't want to, I don't want to get involved in any of this stuff. How many years I actually spent running away from my purpose and my potential because I just wanted to be normal. But my soul knew better. My soul knew better. And I felt like I couldn't rest until I accepted my own truth. My soul was just like, it was like it wasn't, it could not be at peace because I wasn't accepting it. 
And I'm seeing this card as that for some reason, like that's what my soul wants. And that's what I'm meant to do. Almost like this may be a lot bigger than you could have ever imagined. And so your purpose may actually scare some of you because it's that big. And moving on to void, of course, moon here. So this this card talks about a missing element, sort of, where some pieces of the puzzle, they're just not there yet. And this is this like what I was saying earlier is where the answers reveal themselves to you when your soul receives that notification bell and not a moment sooner these answers are coming and will come to you when the time is right your only job is to just simply be in alignment with your soul so when these answers come in they will speak to you so loudly even if we're not in alignment even if that is the case i don't think you'd be here if that was the case honestly we have two aces here you you guys we've got two aces okay that means that whether you like it asked for it wanted it or not these answers are going to reveal themselves to you they're going to come to you and it's going to seem like it just fell from the sky they may even intimidate you a little bit it may not be what you think it is it usually never is but it will resonate with you as a truth so if you can be brutally honest with yourself your entire being will tell you if this is meant for you it will tell you what is meant for you your being will lead you to your own truth and that is how you unlock your purpose that is how you fulfill the prophecy that is your soul being here at this moment in time it, it, you're so special and you just need to know that you just need to know how special how unique how extraordinary you are you were created for such a specific purpose. Literally, the universe could not do its job if you weren't here. That is how important you are. And that is what we were coming to see with this new moon in Sagittarius. I'm not even, I'm not playing, I'm not joking. It's that serious. 2020 is, is going to be something that is pushing us further, deeper into that purpose this is the energy that's just setting us up for it right now. So if you're scared right now, if you're a little intimidated right now, 2020 is going to be nothing to play with. But you will you will come into accepting it because it's just the natural element. That's just the natural progression of things. That's just your natural evolution. And we are committed to evolving. Our soul is committed to evolving. I think I was talking about this a lot in my full moon and Taurus video that I just posted a couple of weeks ago. I'll also link that down below if you're interested. But that entire video, that entire energy that I was picking up on was all about releasing releasing whatever is holding you back releasing whatever it is that we can sacrifice whatever we can sacrifice whatever we can get rid of because the more that we release the more that the universe is going to give to us this this is why we went through scorpio season this is why we endured scorpio season it was hard for very many of us i know it was for me and this is why we endured that because this is what is coming it is so big you guys what's coming to us what is coming to you it's huge and you, you know if you feel like you're not doing the work to get to that place change it right now new moment new me new moment new you new second new you you know what I mean you can change that right now doesn't matter what you've done doesn't matter what you did yesterday doesn't matter what you did five seconds ago change it right now if you want and luck is on your side <laughs> Luck is on your side. I don't believe in luck because um, me personally, I don't think it's needed. I think the universe has already set us up in a way where luck isn't even needed. But yeah, want to call it luck, fortune, blessings, the universe. We're going to change the luck into the universe. The universe is on your side. So know that you cannot be stopped. You will not fail. Okay. So this is all that I'm seeing you guys. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I really do sincerely appreciate you guys um hanging out with me for a little bit sitting down listening to me rant and ramble about this new energy that we're moving into it's going to be so amazing um but yeah uh, i pray that this reading that this video brought you guys some love support clarity and strength and a little bit closer to your own divine purpose uh, i want to thank your guides my guides our higher self and spirit itself for delivering such a beautiful powerful message today hopefully you all come back to visit me sometime soon but until next time you guys i'm just going to go on ahead and leave you with the card here like I do in every new and full moon video for you to interpret your own messages for this uh, specific energy and I'll be back next time all right bye guys